Shakira, Shakira. Well, here we are, better late than never. I am 40 weeks pregnant. So, nothing like waiting until the very last minute to put together my favorite ultimate postpartum hack, freezer meals. Save yourself some money, save yourself some stress, are we saving the stress or are we just moving it to a different moment in time? <laughs> what I definitely know is that when I'm postpartum, I like to rest as much as possible, allow my body to heal. It doesn't happen very often, uh, but that's how freezer meals help me out. Um, so when I first started putting my list together, it started out as a bunch of casseroles that I had to like cook and make, and then it slowly morphed into like dump and go convenience meal, easy, simple, delicious, those are the requirements. And I think I have a pretty good list going on here. Okay, today we're gonna put together uh, 128 meals in 30 minutes. <laughs> All for under $50. <laughs> oh, the claims that everyone has always cracks me up on Pinterest. Okay, I have my crock pot out because the first set of meals that I'm going to throw together, I'm also making tonight for dinner. Save me time. Actually, it was not on my initial list of freezer meal ideas, but I saw it last minute and said, wow, I want that for dinner. Might as well freeze a couple. And you know what I'm thinking now? Oh crap, crap. I might go into labor. I don't have freezer meal bags. I'm gonna cross my fingers, this was an oversight. Well, I'm out of Ziploc brand, but I do have some Ikea Ziploc bags, so you know what? You work with what you have. Okay, I'm not sure which meal I'm gonna put together first. Just kidding, <laughs> I already told you, I know. I'm pooped, I'm pooped already, I haven't even begun. I went grocery shopping all morning to gather all of the ingredients that I'm going to need. And don't you just love grocery shopping? No, okay, me neither. <laughs> Enough of the nonsense, let's put some meals together, shall we? I didn't even print up a recipe for the first one. It's just a slow cooker pot roast. And who doesn't love pot roast? I only make it a handful of times a year, but when I do, <laughs> Shakira style. It's a really simple meal to throw together. Bonus is when I'm postpartum, my body is going to be craving iron. And so red meat is where it's at, for me anyway. Holy crap! Was this the biggest Ziploc bag in existence? Surely I don't need that big of a bag. All right, this is a little better. I was going to buy those bag holders. You know what I'm talking about. I was on Amazon scrolling and then I thought, why make it easier on myself, you know? <laughs> it's not looking too hot for me, okay? I just don't like the idea of using them like twice a year and then what? I think I'll be fine without them. I don't know why Shakira is in my head right now. And you know who else is? Zac Efron, a la The Greatest Showman. That's for later. Okay, pot roast. One of the reasons why I don't make it all that often is because it's kind of pricey. And I've got a lot of mouths to feed over here. It's $4.99 a pound for this sucker. It's worth every penny. <laughs> kind of gross. Hello, Clarice. That the right movie reference? You know what, let me just tell you something right now. I am real glad that I'm finally putting these together. Really gonna take a load off my mind. This is a gargantuan. That is a special Sunday dinner right here. Okay, so I'm sure there's a hundred different ways that you could do this. I'm going for simple. I also looked up a few different recipes and you guys know how I take a recipe and I just modify it to my liking. So I'm going to get three bouillon cubes per bag. You could do two, but I feel like these are a little small. It's gonna take me about seven years to unwrap these. Well, seven years later, here we are. I've actually already had the baby. I'm pregnant again with my next one. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna add some carrots to each of these bags. You can go ahead and add the potatoes in as well, but I like to eat them with mashed potatoes. I don't like the way potatoes cook 
in like the crock pot, but if you do, you go for it, okay? I'm not measuring, I'm just dumping and going because convenience. I'll save the rest of these for a snack. Don't forget to hydrate, purifies the soul. That carrot was really dry. Okay, and then you can take whatever seasoning that you like. Uh, you could do like a gravy packet instead of the bouillon cubes, or you can get the better than bouillon like paste. I just don't like that stuff cluttering up my fridge, but if you have it, you go for it. You do what you have. Yep, I said it like that. Okay, I'm adding some Italian salad dressing mix, and this stuff adds a punch of flavor that I just simply adore, and that's why I add it. And really, you don't have to add any liquid to this because the meat draws out so much delicious juice and grava. But I did read on one recipe, half a cup of apple juice. So that's what I'm doing, half a cup in each. Thank you so much. See, who needs those green things? This is working out just fine. Wee! Yes, I never buy apple juice. What am I gonna do with the rest of this? I almost thought, oh, I have apples at home. Maybe I can make my own juice <laughs> because I do have a juicer. But again, convenience, you know? That's all she wrote, folks. I don't know if I'm missing something, I don't care. I feel like this is gonna be a great meal. We got carrots, we got beef, and mashed potatoes over there. I pointed over there. Again, convenience, I buy them. From Costco, just straight in the refrigerated section, and I just throw them in my freezer, just like this. You know what else is really good? A Mississippi pot roast. Mm. And just like that, I've got three whole meals. Well, that makes me excited. I'm Okay, next up, I'm throwing together some sweet pork enchiladas, except for I'm not making the enchiladas. <laughs> I'm just making the pork because what you do is you um, cook the pork in the slow cooker all day, and then when the pork is done cooking, you then throw together the enchiladas, or you don't have to go through that mess 10 minutes of work. You can just throw it on top of rice. It is perfection and delicious. And that's another hack. Make meals that you know you like, that your family's going to eat. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Hold on though, because I'm not as organized as I thought I was, and I'm pretty sure I have a different pork recipe too. Okay, I can dig it. I'm gonna save this for something else and do this for this. That made sense, right? I love buying these pork tenderloins from Costco. I think they're a fantastic price, better than you can find anywhere else. You get four tenderloins in here, they're massive. And at my local grocery store, like Publix, you get one for the same price as you get four, which blows my mind, it's crazy. So technically I could be making like four different freezer meals from this because there are four pork loins, but I like to have leftovers for like lunch the next day or even just like dinner the same day, two nights a week. That didn't make sense. But I think you can smell what I'm stepping in, right? I never met anyone who didn't say, mmm, I love this pork. I actually made it for a recent family dinner. Rave reviews. Our family dinners are always themed. And when I made this, the theme was like end of summer, like Hawaiian, luau kind of thing. And I feel like I kind of stretched it because enchiladas are not Hawaiian food at all. But I was craving it and it gave me a pass. <laughs> oh my, is the air on? <laughs> is it fall where you live? Because technically it's fall, but it is 90 degrees outside. Okay, so if you want to sear these before you get started, you go ahead until your heart's desire. But I'm just gonna start dumping stuff in the bag. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic powder up in here. Little is subjective, okay? Season it however the heck you want. Hey, just for fun, let's add some onion powder. Yep, that's delicious. One can of green chilies go in each one, and this adds such a punch of flavor. Oh my gosh, there was a time where I cooked without green chilies, and I just don't wanna go back to that time, you know? <laughs> then you throw in one can of red enchilada sauce. I'm not a huge fan of the red sauce, I'm more in favor of the green, but just trust the process. And then let's throw in half a cup of brown sugar. 
packed, <laughs> and this is what makes it sweet. Hey, speaking of beverages, I also never drink. Good old Dr. Pepper. Oh, oh boy, it's fizzing. Oh gosh, what do I do now? Well, I thought I was making four of these, so I bought two bottles. Can I freeze this, <laughs> or does it just last indefinitely? Gotta take a taste test for the chef. <laughs> Poison. <laughs> it tastes like poison. <laughs> I've never been able to just drink soda. Okay, 12 ounces of, oh, oh. Look at that fizzy magic. Okay, 12 ounces, and there's 20 in here, so I'm just gonna do half in each. And I feel like that's gonna be good enough. You can do Coke or Pepsi, I don't know. Whatever you want or have. Yay, don't fall. Lee! There's a mess happening everywhere. It fell over here. Can you even see? And it fell over here. It's not looking too hot for me, okay? Word of advice, buy the bag holders. <laughs> well, that was a mess and a half. Since I have the pork loins uh, next to me, I figured I would, what am I gonna do next? All right, here we go. Hey, sad story. I was gonna make cranberry rosemary one pan chicken. Made it before, absolutely love it, but the stores don't have cranberries yet, not even in the freezer section. Okay, I'm gonna make honey glazed pork tenderloin. By the way, the previous pork tenderloin that we put together, the sweet pork enchiladas, I do have a recipe um, like of me making it fully on my channel, so I'll try to link that below. But they are superb. I just realized I didn't write on any of the bags. Great! What good is a junk drawer without a permanent marker? Do yourself a favor and write on the bags because I know you might think that you're gonna remember what's in there, but you also might not. <laughs> Back to business Mulan style. We're making the honey glazed pork tenderloin. And one thing that I used to not like about throwing these like dump and go recipes together is because it's not a whole meal. You still have to make a vegetable and a starch to go along with it, you know? But it still helps. And I like to keep frozen broccoli. Oh, this is open. Oh. I like to keep fro- Lord, help me. Lord, show me the way. Some people just seem like they have it all together. I am not one of those people. Okay. I, what, well, I got broccoli in the freezer. That's all. <laughs> What are we adding to this? I assume oil only because you're supposed to like sear it before you throw it in the crock pot. I'm not gonna do that, but I'll add the oil in here. Why not? Cause oil is my blood. We've got some spices, some garlic powder, just a little bit. Ooh, onion powder again, a great addition if you ask me. It calls for paprika. Remember when I thought this was paprika, but it's cayenne powder or pepper. And I feel like this is good enough. <laughs> it adds a little kick. A little, hmm, what's that? And then of course the basics, some salt and pepper in each one. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. I use Coco Aminos and I do not use measuring spoons. And you know if any meal is gonna taste good, it's gotta have some brown sugar in it. So a couple tablespoons of brown sugar going in each one. A couple tablespoons, a quarter cup, Potato, 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 potato. And then to make this extra sweet, half a cup of honey is going in here. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. And then a couple tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Throw that in. What's that like? Mm, I love balsamic vinegar. I love red wine vinegar. Red wine vinegar and oil on a salad. It doesn't get much simpler and delicious than that. Okay, these are done. And of course, whenever you're ready to cook these, I don't, is this a slow cooker recipe? <laughs> no, you can cook them in the oven if they're thawed and whatnot, but I just dump it in the slow cooker, put it on low. Everything tastes better when it's on low. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. They kill that pepper. They kill. I'm gonna sneeze this baby right out. Give that a little massage. All right, cool. Oh, this is my water breaker. Is that still wet from the sweet pork? <laughs> The sweet pork spill. Wouldn't that be funny if I went into labor as I was prepping the meals? 
I don't know, I feel like I'd be happy about it. Can you believe we're only five minutes in? I've already got seven meals prepped and dinner ready for tonight. It's amazing. Okay, next I'm going to throw together Al's famous chicken curry. It is one of my all-time favorite dishes. It is simple, it is delicious, it is family friendly, and it's a meal. <laughs> It checks off all the boxes, right? And it is the first one. I am so hot. I don't know what I'm looking around for, but I'm sweating. <laughs> Are my pits sweaty? Whew. Okay, it is the first one that I'm actually going to have to prep some ingredients. So like, I'm actually gonna have to cut some stuff up. Joy. First things first, cutting up the onion. I'm gonna make three. I think anyway, so I'm gonna cut up three onions. I'm actually gonna see how much. Yeah, I think three is a good amount. I really like onions. You can do half an onion per recipe, but I go big. Well, these were some massive GMO onions, so I think two will suffice. It yielded me about five cups. I'm just gonna set the onions aside and start dicing these potatoes that I just washed. They're just run-of-the-mill baked potatoes or baking potatoes, what are they called, russets? And I leave the skin on mostly because I don't care. I use about three potatoes uh, per meal. And it's a pretty hefty meal. You know, I've got a lot of mouths to feed over here. And I'm just gonna dice them all up. I have another curry recipe that's like super simple that you can either do tomatoes, like diced tomatoes in it, or red peppers, and that's really good too. But I prefer the potatoes in it. I don't know, I think it just brings a whole new element. I really like carbs and I really like potatoes. <laughs> Plus when you're postpartum, you're gonna need all those calories. And then I'm just going to dice up the chicken. I have chicken thighs. I think chicken thighs just stay moist and juicy and delicious so much more than chicken breasts. But they are a little bit more on the fatty side. So, you know, use what you like or what you have. I'm just gonna cut mine up into bite-sized pieces. Okay, I think I have everything all ready and prepped. Oh man, where's my permanent marker? <laughs> it's like tape and scissors when you're wrapping Christmas gifts. Where do they go? Oh man, I'll tell you what, I can't wait to eat this. This is one of my favorite meals. If I could make it once a week, I would. I mean, I could, because I'm the one who cooks and make the, makes the meal plans, but... I know, you know, not everyone else loves it as much as I do. I'm just gonna divvy up these potatoes between the three bags. You don't need a kitchen scale for this. Just, it's cooking, you know what I mean? You'll be fine. That is a decent amount of potato. Next are the onions. You know what, maybe I should have cut up a third onion. What should I do? What would Al do? What's cut is cut. I'm just gonna divvy that up. It's just never enough, you know? It's never enough. I don't care. The Greatest Showman tra soundtrack is like the ultimate. And then I'm gonna divvy up the chicken. This is the fun part. A few handfuls in each should do you good. A one, two, three. So these are my confessions. I've never made this as a freezer meal before. But I know it can be done, and I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. But typically, you would cook all of this and then add the rest of the ingredients kind of like as a sauce. So I'm just going to throw in a couple tablespoons of garlic to each one. And yes, I'm using pre-minced because convenience wins. I'm like, what am I gonna do with the rest of the jar? So just, here we go. One teaspoon of sugar. You can do white sugar, that's what I normally do, but I have brown sugar just already on the counter, so why not? Two tablespoons of green curry paste go into each one, but honestly, like, I do at least half a jar, sometimes a full jar, because I, I like that curry flavor, and I feel like it's just not enough. So I have two jars of this green curry paste, and I'm just gonna divvy it up between the three meals, 
You can use red. They also have yellow, which is a little more mild. Uh, you know, use what you like. A little bit of ginger goes in each one. Ginger packs a punch, so I wouldn't go overboard on this. You can use fresh ginger. I just, you know, it's whatever. I don't have it. And then curry powder, how much? Two teaspoons? Nah, we'll do like two tablespoons. How do we open this up? Like, how are you gonna call this curry and only call for two teaspoons of curry powder? You know what I mean? Like, come on. So just a little more than it calls for. They call me U.S. H-E-R-R-A-Y-M-O-N-D. I'm gonna add four tablespoons. It says four and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. I have cocoa aminos. I'm just gonna eyeball that. The more the merrier because it's delicious. I don't know if I just told you teaspoon or tablespoon, but it's definitely teaspoon. <laughs> Doesn't even matter at this point. And then I'm going to add one can of coconut milk. And I use the full fat. And you know what's even really great is that all of the cream comes to the top. Look at that, coconut cream. You can make um, dairy-free whipped cream out of that. Mm -hmm. But nowadays they sell like a whole can of just coconut cream. Is that what I bought? Gosh, why is this so thick? This adds just a really nice creamy texture to the curry. And then also when the potatoes cook, the starches when you cook it are, is going to thicken up the sauce as well. So this recipe also calls for chicken broth. And I'm debating adding that in. Yeah, I'm gonna add it in. Oh my goodness, these smell delicious already. Uh, okay, I'm going to add just a couple of cups in each one. Oh wait, a couple of cups? Maybe a little more than a couple. And then when you're cooking it, and if you feel like you have to add more, add more, you know? Those potatoes have to cook. Oh gosh, we don't want another spill. I've also gotten questions in the past about freezing cut potatoes and if they go black. Uh, they don't go black if you cover them. So I think this is gonna help with that as well. Three more feet, freezer meals. Oh gosh, that wasn't open. That's awesome. Locked and loaded. How am I gonna zip these up? <laughs> Funny enough, I got this recipe when we had a themed family dinner night as well. I don't remember what the theme was, but I remember thinking, wow, I need this recipe. Our next theme for October is going to be carnival. It started out as like fall foods and then it ran into like carnival theme because all we could start thinking about was like caramel apples. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna give these a really nice mix before they make their way to the freezer. Well, I took a little forced break. We had some stuff going on, you know, just life. And I am ready to put together my next meal, slow cooker country ribs. I didn't even know what this was <laughs> until I kept seeing the recipe on Pinterest and I thought, okay, well, I'll give it a shot. And when you know it, the style of ribs that it uses, they're not expensive like the ribs that you might be thinking of or the ribs that I was definitely thinking of. They are like pork ribs and they're $3.79 a pound. They're boneless, so I like that. I feel like you could also use any meat that you wanted in this recipe and obviously in all of the recipes. A little prep work is involved for this one. Just cutting up an onion for each dinner. Okay, this works. The recipe calls for two and a half pounds of boneless country style pork ribs. Is that what I got? Yeah, country style ribs. I never even, I overlook this at Costco, I guess, every time that I go. So I got this honking thing of it. I'm just gonna divide it. Two, four, six, perfection. Three ribs, here's a rib. I don't even know if that's a rib. Oh, I'll tell you right now, I feel like my ribs are breaking every day. I feel like my hips are just expanding as we speak. I can just hear everything crack a lacking. Okay, well that was fun. Ooh, was that a contraction? Ooh, my back. I'm just kidding, there's nothing happening. Okay, one onion goes into each bag 
And I feel like in the slow cooker, the onion is just kind of going to disintegrate and just leave the great flavors. Another super simple recipe, it includes a couple of my favorite things, which is sugar and more sugar in the form of barbecue sauce. I just added some salt and pepper. Oh yes, and here is the kicker. Since we're making these in the slow cooker and normal ribs are made like, I don't, I've never made ribs before. Where do you normally make them? <laughs> Wherever it gives you that smoky flavor, you know the like peel and lift stuff? It never works for me. Liquid smoke is our friend. That's what gives us that nice mm, woodsy, how would you describe this? Hickory flavor. So two tablespoons of the hickory smoke goes into each one and that's basically the whole bottle so i'm just going to divvy it up Woo! i smell it already oh yeah oh wow oh i'll tell you one of my favorite meals someone brought me postpartum was barbecue oh my i'm salivating already just the scent of that the barbecue the cornbread the cone it has the juice with the garlic bread and the Green beans, oh, those collard greens too. Don't get me started, mm, I want all of it. Plus it's always nice when someone brings you food postpartum that you like don't have to pay for or cook. <laughs> that's, that's really the best thing in life, right? When someone brings you food. Okay, half a cup of uh, brown sugar goes in as well. Just a nice handful. Oh man, you know what? That is simple, but that liquid smoke is really something. I like to keep corn on the cob in the freezer. I just buy it in the freezer section and keep it in my freezer at home. And uh, I think that would be a perfect side dish to this. And then you add one bottle of barbecue sauce. You can go healthy with the barbecue sauce. I feel like, am I adding? It's like basically two cups in each one. Our favorite is Sweet Baby Ray's, but you can use any kind that you want. I feel like there's always so much left in the bottle. Man, I should have made some of these for dinner. I feel like I'm gonna make this before I have the baby. <laughs> I gotta do a little taste test, you know, make sure it's good. But how can it not be good? When you're ready to cook, I'm just gonna, you know, do a little mushooshing around. But when you're ready to cook, you just throw it in your slow cooker six to eight hours until it's done. Pinterest got me with this one, but I don't think it's going to disappoint. All right, two more, ready to go. What's next? Next up are some slow cooker honey garlic pork chops. And you know what I don't cook with a lot? Pork chops. But you know what's really affordable? Pork chops, $1.99 a pound. There's about I don't know, 20 pounds in here, 7.2 pounds. Wait, is there bone in here? Bone in, oh, that was an oversight. Oh, well, whatever, we did it. Um, I've never made this recipe before, so I think I'm just gonna do two. Should I do three? I don't know. I think I'll do two and then save some pork chops because I do wanna make, ooh, there is this one recipe that I do like with pork chops and it is like a fall recipe with apples. It is fantastic. Oh, super simple too. Wait, there's like a healthy version and a non-healthy version. The non-healthy version has stuffing and what else does it have? Oh, apple pie filling. Oh, it is so simple and really good. Crowd pleaser for sure. I'm really regretting having the bone in here, but it's whatever. I threw seven in each one, and these are the thin cut ones. Costco also has the thicker ones, so if you're into that, you go for it. I'm pretty sure the thick ones don't have the bone. Okay, so I divvied it up, and this is what's left over. So three meals, and the meat was $14. So that apple meal will maybe be in a future fall what's for dinner. All right. What do we add to this though? About a third cup of cocoa aminos. And I'm gonna have to open up another one. Oh man, why do they make these so hard to open? Quarter cup of honey for sweetness, also for deliciousness. Always some salt and pepper. 
even if the recipe doesn't state it. <laughs> oh yeah, and at Costco today, I bought the big Mama Jamma garlic. Look at this. Look at this lifetime supply. <laughs> not the way I use it though. A few cloves of garlic in each one. It's not called honey garlic chicken for no reason, right? Maybe a little more, why not? And then half a cup of ketchup, good. I am not a fan of ketchup. So you know what, I'm gonna try, I put this on its uh, upside down. I'm just gonna use whatever's left in here too. And that's all she wrote. Seems pretty simple to me. Throw this in the slow cooker when you're ready to cook. Low, six to eight hours, just like everything else. Did those bones poke a hole in the bag? What is happening? All over my hand. Oh, holy hell! It did rip a hole in the bag. I washed it off, thought it was fine. It's not fine. Moving right along to the next recipe, pepper steak. This is something I've been craving for weeks, so it's probably something that I'm going to have to look forward to eating. I don't make it a lot because it's steak and it's expensive, but I found a way around that. Hold on. Let me take all these stickers off because sometimes I forget and then I cut them and it's it's just not a good thing, okay? So the recipe calls for flank steak, which is pretty expensive, even at Costco, like at nine something a pound. I was able to find this pretty close to it, and it all looks the same to me, beef for stew, and this was less than $5 a pound. And like, my local grocery store doesn't even sell ground beef for $5 a pound, so I thought that was a good deal. That's what I'm gonna do. How many pounds is in here? Four and a half, so I'm gonna make two of these dinners. I'm looking for a cutting board. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my knife. Like, where's my good knife? This one sucks, but it's what I have, so. Ah, where's my knife? Found it. Okay, so I'm just going to cut my bell peppers up, and I have three of each, red and green because Christmas is coming up. No, these are my favorite colors. You got, you could use any colors of bell peppers that you please. I'm gonna seed these. Oh look, I love when I find a little baby. Oh, it's a, it's a little baby. <laughs> I love that. All right, I'm gonna seed and, and wash them. Oh, BRB. I was trying to say, I realized that most of these recipes have pork and or beef, and I have a whole freezer meal video. I'm pretty sure it's like 10 different recipes for chicken marinades, and they are all delicious, so I will link that for you to check out if you want some chicken ideas. Also this time around, I try not to do things that I've done in the past, which is what I always do, um, but if it were up to me, I might on my own make like chili, because that is always a crowd pleaser and it's affordable and delicious and it just hits every time, you know? Oh man, I think I'm cutting these too small. Oh well, what's done is done. You're distracting me. So I've divvied up the meat and what attracted me to the beef stew mixture was that it was all, oh gosh, I just poked a hole in the dang bag. Oh, what is wrong with me? I'm trying to show you. The pieces are already cut up. Not exactly how I typically do it in like thin strips, but the work is already done for me and that was just a win in my eyes. I'm going to divvy up the bell peppers between the two dinners. And this is just one bell pepper per bag, but they were huge. And I think I cut up three red bell peppers, but they were smaller than the green. Also, I love peppers. Gives it a really nice color. I'm going to add a couple of cloves of garlic to each bag. A little bit of ginger or ginger paste if you have that. I did buy it, but I left it in my pantry and pretty sure that's not how you can store it. Two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar going in. A quarter cup of soy sauce. Oh gosh, that ginger. <coughs> Wait, I wasn't paying attention. Was that enough? Does it even matter at this point? Well, there's hardly anything left, so might as well go for it. Ooh, this one calls for some brown sugar. I totally forgot. That's probably why I like it so much. One tablespoon in each. And then I'll probably do half a cup of water 
in each one. And that's it. When I go to make this, I'll probably thaw it out and then cook it. I don't know. Or just throw it in the crock pot. It'll depend on my mood and the day. But that's it. Look how beautiful. She's beauty and she's grace. She's Miss United States. It's going to get all the flavors getting to know each other in there. Two more down the hatch. Okay, I'm pooped. I'm wiped out. I just moved all the freezer meals over here. I've got 16 meals and that makes me happy. And I'm happy. I'm feeling glad I got sunshine in a bag along with my meals. I also have dinner going in the crock pot, so that makes me real happy. And beyond that, I forgot to buy ground beef, so I'm thawing some out in hopes that I'm going to make some Christmas lasagna. So for the Christmas lasagna, I'm just gonna throw together some spaghetti sauce or pasta sauce, some red sauce for the lasagna. I call it Christmas lasagna because I typically only make it around Christmas time. And when I say typically, I mean, I feel like I've only made it a couple of times. By the way, it's the next day. You know, after bedtime and dinner time, I'm just done for the day, you know? All right, so I have probably two-ish pounds of ground beef, a pound of sausage. If I had a bigger pot, I would make more, but I think that will suffice. I plan on making two lasagnas. Uh, and I was hoping to have some leftover sauce just to have on hand for like an easy spaghetti night because I love my husband, but my God, he cannot cook. <laughs> Try as he may. Sometimes it's nice to have spaghetti sauce that I've made in the freezer for him to just warm up and throw on the noodles that he cooks up because it just tastes a million times better than just some stuff from the jar. But I am not above using stuff from the jar. That's exactly what we're gonna to use today because surprisingly, this it was cheaper to buy it in the jar because of sale prices rather than just buying a can, like a large can of tomato sauce. So I have a bunch of uh, pasta sauce, but really this is like tomato sauce. It has like no flavor, no seasonings. <laughs> and then I bought four boxes of the gluten-free oven-ready lasagna. Well, I almost forgot to add an onion, diced up. It's like a massive onion, so maybe use two. Or leave it out if you don't like it. I don't care. Okay, and while this cooks down, I am going to work on the cheese mixture, and it's like, what are measurements even, you know? Because when I look up lasagna recipes, I feel like there's never enough of the ricotta filling. Oh, 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 hold on. Don't call the Food Network, okay? Oh boy, that was, okay, we got it, we made it. So I have a couple of very large uh, ricotta cheese bins, 32 ounces each, couple of eggs, I might add a third egg, I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes, we'll play it by ear. A few handfuls of cheese, and by a few, I mean probably close to four cups. And then probably, What's in here? One and a half cups, let's do half of that. Three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese or more. We'll see once we mix it in. And then if you have fresh herbs, which I am fresh out in my garden because I kill everything. But thankfully I have my trusty Italian seasoning. You might think that's too much, but it's not. And then a little bit of salt and pepper here, maybe a little bit more, that's a lot of cheese. <laughs> And then we'll mix that in. My original recipe calls for parsley, and I am just 1,000% offended by the smell of parsley. I feel like I can get some lawn clippings and it'll have the same effect. So I much prefer the Italian seasoning to it, but you can add what you like. I'm just gonna give this a really nice mix. This is making me want some cannolis. All right, this is looking good. Let's sit th this aside. So once the onions are nice and translucent and soft, add a little bit of garlic in here. My family recipe calls for, I think, red wine. But I don't have that on hand. It does give it a really, really nice flavor. Oh, I'm too weak to open these. Oh, Lord, give me the strength. You know, I have one of those like grippy things, but Meredith uses it as a blanket for her, uh, for her toys. 
I don't know, I can open Come on, muscle. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, this is ridiculous. You know how like when it's early in the morning you have you no know, muscles strength in your hands? Just me? Okay. Oh, come on, Kim, everybody's watching. Woo! One down. I'm sweating. <laughs> So all I needed was a little bit of 70s music. Is that 70s or 80s? I don't know. Good jam is a good jam. And then what I do with these is just fill them up with a little bit of water. Maybe a quarter cup each. Give the old shake a shake a. Make sure you get every last drop out of there, okay? I want you to get your money's worth. So you have to rinse the jar before you recycle it anyway. Going to assess the situation, I might add one more jar of sauce, depending on the meat ratio in here. But this is looking pretty good. Now for the seasonings, because you need to doctor this up. You cannot leave it how it is, it's blasphemous. You need to add some salt and pepper. And some Italian seasoning, yep. Probably more than that, but you know, that's all I've got. Hold on. Some of you already knew that was a lie. <laughs> I've got plenty more where that come from. All right, give this a mix. Woo, it's hot. Oh, I was like, that's real salty. <laughs> it's because I still had the salt all over my hands. All right, I'll pretend like I'm a real chef and use a spoon. Bottoms up. Yeah, it needs more, more of everything. How about let's get some onion powder up in here, some more garlic powder. Can never have enough. Definitely needs more salt and pepper. We'll start there. Okay, second taste test. It's made with love. Get off my back. Better, but I gotta tell you, it needs more. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Does she have taste buds? <laughs> Honestly, after the past couple of years, do any of us? All right, third time's a charm. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Delicious. But I will add a little bit more salt and pepper. <laughs> Maybe some red pepper flakes too. Ooh, that would be good. Yeah, okay. Now, I wouldn't be embarrassed to serve this to my family. Well, I don't know what the heck happened, but this like got stuck to my countertops over there. Are these still good? I assume they're fine. They're gluten free. It's like, were they even good to begin with? I have a couple of pans left over from the last freezer meals that I made. Just trying to figure out the best way to uh, coat the bottom of these. That's not even the first layer. I need to go back to bed. Got my big vat of spaghetti and I will definitely have leftover sauce. All right, I've got the whole setup. Gang's all here. Put a little bit of sauce on the bottom. I'm sure you've made lasagna before. But you know what? If you haven't, it is so simple and easy. You know what's even easier than lasagna? Baked ZD, and oh boy, I've been meaning to share with you the baked ZD recipe that I have. It is, it reigns supreme. It has sour cream in it. I don't even like sour cream, but I'm gonna tell you what, it's good stuff. So we've got sauce, noodles, cheese. We're gonna repeat those layers. Oh my goodness, lasagna, such a comfort meal. I actually made one last night and uh, something very similar to this. I just made some extra sauce. Basically, I had leftover ingredients in the fridge from making the freezer meals, and I needed to, you know, use them. So I made one, and we had several guests over, a bunch of kids, and they gobbled it up. They said it was delicious, even with the gluten-free noodles. Love the gluten-free no-bake noodles. What a game changer. And I actually did the math. I love buying the... Um, the frozen lasagnas from Costco. I think those are the best tasting ones. The ones from like Stouffer's, oh my gosh, baby food. I don't, how do people eat them? You have to add <laughs> so much seasoning to it. Alex loves them, but we rarely, rarely buy them. When I say rarely, I mean like probably twice in our whole marriage. I digress. So I like the ones from Costco. You get two of them for around $17, $16, $17. I did the math and of how much these cost me to make. And the ones from Costco are thinner. So we typically make both of them if I'm feeding the family, which I'm always <laughs> feeding the family. But um, these 
are much larger, so it only takes one of them to feed the whole family. Plus, we had leftover. Plus, plus we fed how many extra people? Four people, and we had leftovers. So it's fantastic. And I did the math, and this came out to less than twelve dollars per pan with the gluten-free noodles. So that's the best part is that, you know, no one really offers the gluten-free noodles. You have to make them yourself and you save money. Typically gluten-free things are, you know, more expensive, whatever. So, uh, yeah, that was, this was a win. I, I'm glad that I came out with three in the end. And that means I'll have three more dinners taken care of when I'm postpartum. And it's just super simple to throw them straight into the oven from the freezer. It doesn't get much simpler than that. No skill involved at all. Well, I did it. Three lasagnas, one more than I was expecting, so that's exciting. And I have some pasta sauce left over. So I'm gonna let these cool, cover them with tin foil, and then throw them in the freezer. Three slash almost four meals right here. Boom. Well, I have 16 freezer meals made. If I made the lasagna with you, that's fantastic. I have the meat currently thawing out. So you'll know before I do in my current state of mind, if I threw that together or not, it is a great one and tastes so much better than the frozen lasagnas that you can find in the frozen food section now. But this makes me happy to know that I have over two weeks of meals in the freezer, ready to go. I hope this video gave you some inspiration slash motivation slash good dinner ideas, if nothing else, right? So if you want to, subscribe, put a little happy in your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.